I'm going to walk through some code samples from the course site to explain some Arduino programming idioms. This is the lecture sample code from the site. We're going to look now in the sound section at Melody. So I'm going to copy this code and paste it into a Tinkerscad sketch that just has a speaker wired to pin 5. So uh, we can see a couple things here. Uh, first of all, um, I am opening the serial port. I do always recommend that for debugging. Second is we have a note table here. This notation of const float note underscore table bracket bracket equals brace and then followed by some numbers is a way of initializing a constant table of floating point numbers. Note underscore table is the table name. The open braces, just brace brace, uh, without a number inside is telling the compiler to generate a table with a length based upon the number of initializers in the list. It's marked to const, so the compiler knows that it won't, the values won't be changed. They're con considered constant, although there's a subtlety we'll come back to on this one. Note that the last value is a negative number, minus one. In the loop function, there's a loop here of int i equals zero that uses a, a, an integer index to walk through the table. Note that the end condition here is, I'm sorry, the repeating condition is, as long as the value that it retrieves from the note table, note underscore table brace i brace, as long as it's positive, it'll continue looping. So the technique we're using here is to use a marker at the end of the list, an illegal value to indicate the last value, and then i walks through the list. Let's give it a quick listen here. So not a brilliant melody, but it is playing it. Um, we'll notice that the table values are just raw frequencies that are passed to the tone function to, uh, to play a pitch. So they're chosen to be musical tones, but they could have been any value within audible range, and that would have worked just fine. Now, a couple comments on the table itself. Uh, floating point numbers on the Arduino take four bytes, so they're not a small amount of memory when you start getting to large tables. And furthermore, it turns out that the way that C++ works, it assumes that even constant values are loaded into normal memory. So even though this table isn't changing, it still is loaded into the 2K data memory. And in some cases, that can add up to really fill your memory if you have a large note table. It takes more work to actually store the tables in truly read-only memory and program memory using Arduino-specific constructs. So that's a, a, a bit of a trouble, but um, you might run into this if you try having a very large table. Let's go to the next example, which takes a slightly different approach. So the second example we'll go to is, is called note-table. And let me copy that in to, to see how that works. So we'll give it a quick listen before we go. So this is doing a couple things different. First of all, it's using a table called notes. And you'll notice a couple things here. First, it's a type byte. Byte is a unsigned 8-bit integer. It just takes 8 bits of memory. And the numbers are stored in there. 60, 62, 64 are integer values, um, which represent notes in the MIDI note system. So 60 is the middle C, 62 is the D above that. And this plays out a major C scale. MIDI is a standard that goes back to the 80s for messaging systems to allow synthesizers to communicate note data back and forth. And the note values basically represent keys on a piano keyboard. So there's this, the MIDI range is from 0 to 127, and uh, it's a convenient system for representing notes. It's independent of the temperament or the exact tuning. That's left up to the synthesizer to generate. Now we notice the other thing going on here is there's a conversion line. If you look at line 22, freak equals the constant freak a0 times this power function 2 to basically n over 12. What this is applying is it's applying a exponential curve. The power, power is a raises 2 to some power here. It applies the exponential curve of an equal temperament tuning. Every 12 notes up is 12 semitones. Uh, the output of this will be doubled. So it's using a0, which is a very low, the lowest a note, which is MIDI note 21, which has a defined frequency of 27.5 hertz. And then it's computing the MIDI note relative to that note, note minus the A0, and using that as the numerator in this fraction inside the power. And that allows uh, estimating a, a multiplier, computing a multiplier for an exactly equal tempered scale. So when uh, MIDI note is uh, MIDI A1, 
that note minus a is a zero will be 12. It'll be simply a uh, power of two to the one is the value two. That'll double the frequency and get the octave. So that's a closed form expression for computing any note value that uh, will generate the, generate the right frequency value for the given notes. Now, one thing to note is pow is, an, is a mathematical function that Arduino is not terribly fast. It requires several different floating point operations, and it's all emulated in software. But we're only calling it once per node. So the Arduino has plenty of computing power to handle that. If you try calling it very fast inside a tight loop, you'll find that the time spent inside the math can start to stack up. But that's not a problem in this case. So there's a quick rendition. Of, oh, one more point here. C++ does not directly report the length of an array. And it'll happily index your arrays past the end. There's no bounds checking. If you try to look up uh, this notes you know, bracket i, if i were to range out of range, the chip would simply try to retrieve some memory from outside the array memory. And that could cause problems, and it's not recommended. So C++ having no direct way of calculating the number of indices, but there is an expression you can use. It uses this size of operator, which is not really a beginner thing, but basically it reports the size of some data object in bytes at compile time. So the size of the whole array divided by the size of a single byte ends up being the number of integer elements in the array. So that's the kind of construction you see in C uh, uh, to, to calculate the length of a static array. It doesn't work for dynamic arrays because there is no size of, of some kind of dynamic array, but that's, that's sort of beyond the scope of this discussion. So there you go. There's a kind of different, two different ways of using tables of fixed values, either floating point or integer, to store data that can be then used to control a musical process.